Welcome to Back to the Text Themselves, a series on phenomenology. Today's video examines Chapter 5, Sections 28 to 30 in Heidegger's Being in Time. In the previous chapter, we considered the everyday being in the world of Dasein, both in our modes of care toward things as ready to hand or objectively present, as well as in our being with others. We saw how things come near and how we draw closer or further from things. Finally, we saw how things become meaningful for us through the totality of significance that forms the worldliness of the world. All these analyses conclude that the there of being there, which Dasein means, is already there from the beginning. In other words, and in contrast to the metaphysics of presence that has dominated the Western philosophical scene according to Heidegger, thought does not begin with a single principle called being and then added onto it secondary or derivative characteristics so that first there's being and then from this you can arrive at a being that is in the world. No, instead they are equally primordial or equiprimordial. Now, the equiprimordiality of the there consists of specific modes of being. First and foremost is that of care, but care itself is modulated by other constitutive characteristics addressed in chapter 5, the first of which is the notion of attunement. And so in this video, the following questions will be addressed. One, how is attunement related to facticity and disclosure? Two, what are the three ways attunement discloses my facticity? And three, how does the phenomenon of fear exemplify attunement? Heidegger's concept of the Findlichkeit has been translated in many ways, including attunement, state of mind, and disposedness. Since I'm primarily using the newer translation, I'll stick with the term attunement. Its literal meaning is something like the state in which one may be found. In German, the conversational question, how are you, contains the root of the word Befindlichkeit. And the question itself literally means, how do you find yourself to be? Attunement is an existential that concerns Dasein's awareness of itself in the world. Moods are modes of attunement. Even though Heidegger speaks of being in a mood, he does not offer a psychology of feeling, but instead is giving an account of Dasein's fundamental awareness of its actual existence. Through the moods of attunement, the world matters to and affects Dasein. Just as important, being in a mood reveals Dasein in a manner consistent with that mood. Heidegger identifies three characteristics of attunement and each discloses a particular dimension of Dasein's being in as such. Before addressing them, it may be helpful to say something about the concepts of disclosure and facticity. Disclosure is not about providing information, nor is it about identifying reasons or causes for something. These are all ontical considerations, whereas the particular moods of attunement disclose an ontological truth. Dasein comes to existentially know itself through its moods because moods disclose certain existential a priori presupposed by those moods. Regardless of whether it's a bad mood or a good mood, the fact that such a mood happens to me reveals a particular relation to the world, how well I fit within it, or how I'm responding to some unalterable facts of my given existence. In other words, moods disclose something about my facticity. Facticity is not about the facts of something objectively present, which can be grasped intellectually. Instead, facticity concerns the usually pre-reflective world of meanings and relations that I'm inextricably bound to in my being there in a world. It is the actuality of my existence that, for the most part, I'm absorbed in through everydayness as I get swept up in the inauthenticity of the they. So, facticity is frequently covered up and hidden from me. The first characteristic of attunement is that it discloses my thrownness. Thrownness indicates the facticity of Dasein. 
For example, I was born at a particular time within a particular set of circumstances. I chose none of it. It was as if I was just plopped down for who knows what reason or even for no reason at all. And I have to make do with this situation. So thrownness is the always already finding myself in a world. To say attunement discloses thrownness indicates that attunement pertains to moods that are in response to the facticity of the existence I'm thrown into. Particular moods can serve as a turning toward or away from this thrownness. But regardless of which mood I'm in, moods in general always bring Dasein face to face with the there of one's thrownness. Now this is not a favoring of emotion over reason. Moods are not opposed to reason and decision making, but in fact, reason and deciding presuppose a specific mood. Indeed, I'm always in a mood. This idea reminds me a little bit of the work by Antonio Damasio, the neuroscientist who in Descartes' Error shows on a neuroscientific basis that emotion is required for any form of decision making. Now, I wouldn't want to use that as a reason for supporting a philosophical position, but it's, in, it's an interesting correlation with what we're talking about today. Consequently, the second characteristic of attunement discloses that Dasein is essentially a being in the world, which makes it possible to direct oneself to something. I can't be in a mood if I'm not already oriented to the world I was thrown into. And I couldn't be in a mood about something if that thing was not already imbued with meaning that took place within a totality of significance. So a third characteristic is that attunement discloses that what Dasein encounters in the world matters to Dasein. If I was merely thrown into a world that I understood, but that did not concern me at all, I wouldn't find myself in a mood. But because I'm open to and care about the things in the world, it's possible to be affected by them. And indeed, my being affected and the moods I find myself in allow me to understand those things in a particular way. Moods are the medium through which thought occurs. How do I know another person? Does having a set of facts about their birth, demographics, and occupation allow me to understand that individual? Not really. Instead, I come to understand them as enemy or friend, lover or acquaintance. Each of these presupposes a certain mood that delivers access to the other. The things I know about my spouse, my understanding of her, are only acquired because I love her. And because I love her, I'm allowed to see and appreciate her strengths and flaws because love opens the possibility for disclosing dimensions of phenomena that would otherwise be covered over. And it's for this reason that uh, Heidegger, in a footnote, addresses uh, Blaise Pascal's statement in uh, The Pensee, where he talks about how charity is necessary for accessing truth. The same holds not only for love, but for all moods, and each mood discloses something different. Fortunately, we're provided a relatively straightforward example of what Heidegger means by attunement and mood through his analysis of the phenomenon of fear. Fear is not the only mood he could have chosen, but it does help to set up a contrast with the notion of angst that will be developed a little bit later in Being in Time. Now, there are three aspects of this phenomenon presented here. First, there is the fearsome, that which we are afraid of. What is fearsome is always encountered in the world. It is relevant as a kind of harmfulness, which is disclosed within a context of relevance. So harmfulness comes from a region that's unnerving. To fear it means it's not near enough to be directly dealt with, but it is drawing near. And as it draws near, its harmfulness becomes more and more evident until it achieves the character of being threatening. The threatening is the nearness of what is harmful. Nonetheless, it still reveals itself only as a possibility that may or may not happen. But for this reason, it elicits even more fear because of the unknown. Fearing is the second aspect of the phenomenon of fear. Fearing reveals Dasein's being concerned with what is fearsome. Being afraid is a mood that attunes oneself to the fearsome, 
allowing one to circumspectively understand what is fearsome. It also discloses the world in which something like this fearsome thing can be feared in its drawing near. The ability to draw near in turn discloses the essential existential spatiality of being in the world. So for example, I just submitted my entire manuscript to uh, a publisher. I finished it this week. And I am filled with tremendous amount of fear about how the peer review process will go. So the fearsome is the rejection, right? The, the response by the reviewers that will tell me that my manuscript is no good. The mood of fear is what discloses to me that I even care about what they have to say, that something about the manuscript and the words they're providing are meaningful to me. And that meaning only takes place within the context of a world of academia where one is judged in such a way as to determine their standing in the academic world. And so a lot of one's identity can be tied up in this process. So by fearing what the fearsome might do, the fear itself is presupposes something more profound about the total relevance of the situation. Now, in fearing the potential rejection, which is the fearsome, there is a third characteristic of fear, which is what Heidegger calls fearing about. So first, there is something scary. Next, there is the feeling of being scared. And now there is what I'm scared of happening as that scary thing draws near. Perhaps it is fearsome because it can kill me or perhaps worse, destroy my reputation. So fear discloses something about Dasein, that Dasein is a being that cares about its being. More than just Dasein, however, fear discloses the things or people Dasein cares most about. It will touch at the very core of a piece of my identity. I'm not fearful if someone tells me I'm not good at swimming or folding clothes. In fact, I'm not as fearful about those things, it discloses that I don't care about them as much. Additionally, fearing about can be a fearing for. In fearing for others, I'm afraid of the other's well-being, perhaps because the other may be in danger. Though we might be afraid together, this is not necessary. And indeed, my fear grows when others are not afraid of what can be harmful to them. So such as the individual who drives at a reckless speed or drives drunk. Heidegger makes some other distinctions worth mentioning here. First, fear becomes alarm when the feared thing is known and is about to happen at any moment. Second, horror is fear toward what is entirely unfamiliar. Third, terror is when the threatening is encountered as the horrible and alarming. So these are only a few of the variations among many that could be analyzed in this phenomenon of fear. But together, they all point to the fact that Dasein is fearful and that being fearful is a mood that discloses Dasein's throneness, world, and itself in the particular manner in which it is attuned, giving rise to a particular understanding of all these things. And it will be the notion of understanding that we'll turn to in the next video. I want to thank the following for supporting this channel on Patreon. If you wish to support this work on Patreon, the link is below in the description. You can also support this work by liking and sharing this video, as well as subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, be well. <laughs>